Hi, Luke. How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully you're all doing well. Yeah. We're okay here. Tara is still recovering uh, from surgery. Fortunately, the uh, if, if you haven't been keeping up out there, the uh, uh, chemo's over. Surgery done. Got a few more weeks of recovery until she's but obviously she's got three half stuff that recovery is the important part. And yeah. uh no more cancer, thanks to nice. God. Surgery's done, that's the biggest one. Yeah. Chemo's done. And the doctor said no headaches for at least two weeks or something like that, and this counts. So yeah. <laughs> he stays so. a little time off. It's part of medicine. I would also like to point out. I have two guests with me. One below a sleepy dog. They they blend in. They do. It's and you can't see him that well here. But ah, so I have two boys with me right now. That's gonna wonder again. They can't hear you, but they're gonna wonder why is Dad reacting to. What's going on? It's late. Uh, for those of you who are new to all this, Luke is uh, a fellow streamer, YouTuber, all those fun things. Um, photographers, photographers, photographer, words, difficult, hard work. Um, you can find his stuff at Rob. A photo, I'm, I prefer photo engineer. Uh, you can find him on YouTube. Look, Rob will put the links to his all stuff here. Thank you so much for filling in. Absolutely. It's, it's hopefully we'll, I mean, everybody's been very, very cool about pitching in at this. Yeah. I, I appreciate it so much, which is great. And you, and it's worked out really well for tonight. Tomorrow I have something. Wednesday night I have a concert. Thursday I have something. So you definitely nailed it with timing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I was trying to get someone else to come in this week. Not to, you know, that offense to you, but I like, you know, not to, variety. I I totally get that. Well, variety. not to lean on one person like all the damn time. Stuff, but like, uh, you're not asking me every other week. That's I don't see that as leaning. So you're fine. A certain someone is going to England, and uh, other people. A certain are. someone, certain someone can stay there because I'm gonna mess up with his return documents. <laughs> Good luck at customs. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm gonna get a headache from tonight's stuff. Just, just be honest with me. Is it is it gonna be that bad, or am I just gonna go to gonna have regular night? Actually, we we kind of got it's kind of calm today, so but it's uh, uh, it's still stupid. Uh, well, okay, one of them's for like, oh, but then, <laughs> it's still stupid. So let's. Uh, Let's get it underway. Here we go. So, each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck? The. The. So last week, we had a uh, idiot. Yeah, just straight up idiot. Who more specific, please? Okay, he vandalized the Colosseum at Rome. I did see that. Yes, I saw. Yeah, unaware. It's claimed he was unaware of how old it was. Sure, right. We're not. Oh, that was this Colosseum. This one. Yeah, okay. Well, apparently, you know how sometimes they like they make shows for one market and then just remake it entirely for another one, like sure. like they did Life on Mars in, in UK and then they did a US version of Life on Mars. There's Real Housewives of New Jersey and Real Housewives of Atlanta, kind of very different. So, so well, apparently that they they had they facing a national monument for Rome, and they had to do a Japanese version. Oh. Yeah. Uh, 
like immediately within a week like holy shit that was fast eighth century yep uh a canadian teenager the question by police in japan after carving letters on a wooden pillar of an eighth century temple they said 17 year old boy card julian on a pillar in the uh Tosho Daji Kondo Temple in Tara, Japan. The uh, boy was caught carving the pillar with his fingernail by a Japanese tourist who alerted the staff. The temple was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, after the incident, the boy was questioned suspicion for violating the Cultural uh, Properties Protection Law. Our pillar of the temple's Golden Hall was designated national treasure. One of the eight sites to make up historic monuments of ancient Nara. Um, let's see. Uh, try to look for what the uh, the penalties for it. Yeah, he, he is now his parents who were, were with him when the vandalism occurred. For fuck's sake, really? Now. It's not, I get it, the par- The kid was how old? 17? Seven. They shouldn't have to watch him like a toddler. Boy! Like, what? Oh, man. I, I, uh, I just also, he was quoted, he gave his apology at the end of the article. Um, that doesn't count, sir. Too, too bad, like, for fuck's sake. Oh, there, there is. Uh, any person who has damaged an object of important cultural property can face up to five years in prison or a fine of uh, $2,000. You know what? I know which one of those I would take. I'm given a choice. That's a big ga- chasm between those two choices. Is Japanese prison different than a United States prison? I'm assuming it's probably better. Yeah. Pro- yeah. Yeah. You're either going to prison for five years, or you have to pay two thousand dollars. Oh, I have that on my credit card. Yeah, I can actually open a credit. I can open a credit a bad credit card right now, and they'll just give that to me. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I'm not gonna use it again. Man, they could have added a lot more and gotten it. Huh? That's just fine. I'm assuming Julian is the kid's name. Maybe. I, I I. I, for argument's sake, let's say it is the kid's name. I, are you going to try to swing it then? Like when they came up, said, no, stop me. And then his parents go, Julian, come on. You're going to miss the bus. I get a feeling this up. This is one of them. We can't take you anywhere like kind of kids, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, if he's from Canada and that parents are taking him to Japan, they got money. Those are not cheap flights. I don't care if they were in Vancouver on the closest coast. That is not a cheap flight. Speaking of not a cheap flight, uh, oh my god. If th- this is grounds for murder, I think, for a lot of people. So I'd never been to him. But I would, would feel like with everything going on in the world, a trip to Amsterdam could be how you say rather relaxing in a few ways. So imagine, they're known for trying they're known for trying to instill that. So, yeah. Imagine you're on a flight to fucking Amsterdam when suddenly I flight to Amsterdam reportedly diverted to Chicago over meal choice. I mean, airline's flight heading from Houston to Amsterdam was diverted to Chicago after an unruly business class passenger interrupted the fi- flight Reportedly, because his first meal choice was unavailable. That's not even two hours of flight time. Chicago to Houston? Not even two hours. Flight took off a 4.20 p.m. local time. Ah, uh, that's... Funny. Oh, man. And in Chicago oh, yeah. airspace, two hours into the flight. Uh... Oh, even better. Uh, the plane circled O'Hare's airport as it had to use up fuel, which I don't understand. Oh, that sucks. Oh, ugh. It was dumping fuel, or it would have been... Oh, that's right. Or it would have been too heavy to land. Yeah. Aviation Insider X-John uh, NYC 
posted internal United Communications on Twitter that reported a disruptive passenger on board and a threat level of one, the lowest level of threat. Now the tweet, he reported that the passenger seat enraged over meal choice. Uh, flight landed just over three hours after its scheduled arrival. Uh, yeah, Jesus Christ. Did they give him leftover Golden Corral samples and say, eat it or you don't get to go? What's the... the... No, business <laughs> class, too. He's up there in the front. You're already in fucking... So... You're already in fucking business class. My dude. Yeah. And you're like, no, I don't want this food. I want other yeah, food. Chicken nuggets. Seriously, it's oh. you're fucking grown oh, up. And, like a child. I'm just thinking, too, if that was supposed to be from Houston to um, Amsterdam, long flight, and you could make it two hours. If I was on a flight I paid a lot of money for cross ocean, and we not only couldn't go then, but also we had to circle around Chicago in the air for an hour just because of this guy. You know those pictures they show every now and then, like a passenger duct tape to the seat? That's, that would have been him if we were nice. Nice. The thing about... And we, we, and we have to keep reiterating this because this happens so damn often. A lot. You're in a giant metal tube in the sky. If any little thing goes wrong, everyone in that tube stops being alive. Everyone. They cannot afford to have anyone fucking starting shit for any fucking reason. I like how it says later in the article, the airline has faced criticism that its in-flight meals had failed to return to pre-pandemic norms. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. That's the argument you really want to take with this article? The bad meal? Get out of here. Uh, 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 uh. Fuck you, man. <laughs> Come on. I know you're, the word counts necessity for online articles. I get it. 300 word minimum sometimes. You can think of something else like, well, not to play devil's advocate, but have you had the mashed potatoes from United? Shut up. Like, quite literally, uh, the only thing the flight crew is not allowed to do is throw you off the plane. And that's only they would if they were allowed. Yeah, and that's only because it would depressurize the damn thing. Right. If there was, oh man, if there was like a little shuttle, like a chute, to have you like in an isolated chamber behind the plane, oh yeah, they would use that every single flight. They think it's fu- they think it'd be funny too. So don't don't think they wouldn't try it. But the fact that he wasn't shoved into overhead as like just to keep him silent so everyone else could get to the nether to uh Amsterdam. Uh a one way business class seat on the Houston to Amsterdam flight typically costs six thousand nine hundred dollars. Sixty nine hundred dollars, and you're complaining about your first meal, and you haven't even left the time zone yet. Fuck. Oh, coming back to America. Um, uh, this is Florida, isn't it? We double check this. Yes, this is Florida. Let's do it. Come on, Florida. Have one good week. Bye, have one good week. Like, yeah, that's Florida. Okay, sorry, Florida. Yeah, yeah, you, you got a streak going. So, um, we have seen lots of cock and make its way to these sure. in lots of places. This is this is a first. Like normally, we're having to be like folks with vaginas, and it's normally it's like anuses or something. It, this is a first. I'm, I'm a little impressed, actually. I'm happy. Go. I'm, I'm confused where this is going. Busted man hid bullet behind his balls. Why? A single bullet? An accused fraudster had a bullet hit beneath his testicle. Sorry, jail personnel. Oh, man, that first sentence, the writer had had fun with that one when he made that ep- that first line. Uh, uh, police alleged that Michael Keanu Brennan, 24, utilized stolen information on a credit card uh, to pay for a $3,000 17-night stay in a vacation home in Indian Rocks Beach. Brennan was arrested yesterday in his rental, where police found numerous uh, driver's licenses, checks, Social security cards, oh, okay. credit cards, debit cards, different names. 
Uh, Brandon Singer writes, reportedly cop to buying an identification off the internet and using it to buy the logic. While being booked into jail, Brandon was warned that additional penalties would apply if he was hiding drugs or contraband. Though Brennan claimed not to be carrying, an unfortunate jail deputy located a 22 caliber round of ammunition that was positioned underneath the suspect's testicle. Deputy gets a promotion after this. He did his job and he gets a pay raise. Well, it was collected by charity, by a second sheriff's deputy and was confirmed that they had not been fired, was still alive. Upon discovering the ammo, Brennan was hit with an additional felony charge for introducing contraband into a detention facility. Why? That's Why? A, that's a big. That's a big one too. Also, they gave you an out. They literally gave you an out. Like you had a free pass to go. Yeah, I know I'm in trouble. Here you go. Oh, okay, that's weird, but all right. Yeah, I mean, it's in it. It literally. It, it's not drugs. It wasn't. It, no. it wasn't a bladed. It, it was just a bullet. He could have yeah. said, "Yeah, I, I've got a bullet behind my nuts," and it has to be an ex. He has to have some type of weird logic, like, just in case I get somebody else's gun. You know, bullets aren't universally good, just in case. What? what? Oh, okay. Uh, also, um, great balls of fire, I, of course. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm so, oh, yeah. Well, when he's in jail, that story will get out, by the way. Secrets like that do not stay secret in jail. But besides that, I think about the deputies. Like, do they get to at least use rubber gloves like the tongs and stuff to check or like when he was like they were moving them around did it just fall down and that's when they saw where it come, came from yeah. so my next question if it's a bullet under there and like say he had underwear on it's still gonna get rattled around if you're running especially if you're running from the law getting led around so did he have to like penguin walk I was going why the fuck there's so many questions about the choice for this. Like, if it was like a bag of cocaine, that could be worth like a grand. This is a 22 caliber bullet. That's worth less than a buck. Yeah, it really is. And I don't, even just hiding that in general, just a regular bullet, anywhere, just in your pocket, just like in your shirt pocket, wherever. Even that, I'd be like, all right, whatever. You just like to show off that you have ammunition without the gun, whatever. Oh, okay. But there. And then lying about it when he has to get naked anyway. There's, I just feel like there's so many logical fallacies with this man. <laughs> I can't get caught. Oh, yeah, I can't get caught because I'd have a different identity. And that's probably this guy's motto. But I, I have to admit, I'm still curious. What was the reason for the single bullet? Was it silver and he thought he was going to see like a werewolf and uh, 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 or uh, I'm, I am not pro cop, but I do say those deputies should get a little bit of compensation for having to handle the firepower for lack of a better terminology for that. For the next one, um, we don't even need to pay. For I think this is a reason we a, a good way of saying why do we even need them? Because uh, uh, they're not all very bright criminal. Teller dupes bank robber into waiting in lobby until police arrive. Last week, a man allegedly rolled into a PNC bank in Hollywood and planned to nab some fast cash. Instead of a bundle of money, he was hoodwinked into sitting in the lobby like a customer, while law enforcement wait there, wait the seat. James, if you have a seat over there, have a seat over there. We'll be right there with you. Just, just see, just see. James Timothy Kelly, seventy-seven. What? Walked through the PNC branch with polo shirt, gray shorts, and a white hat, while carrying a mesh bag. Uh, handed a teller a note that said, "Give me the money." Here, the victim bank teller pretended not to see the note, and handed a bank withdrawal slip, slip to Kelly. Kelly then stated. I'm not here for that. I'm here to rob you. In response, the teller pretended she was having computer issues and asked that, Kelly to take a seat. At that, which point, bag, that, that teller is great at this. Good job. At which point, the defendant obliged and popped a squat nearby, 
He was seen on the PNC bank security footage, dutifully sitting in the branch after it demanded cash from the teller. Um, <laughs> Salim D. Responding law enforcement entered the uh, lobby through the back entrance and found Kelly sitting in the lobby. My parents had me later in life. My dad is in his 70s. I just think about my dad trying something like this. Yeah. I, I just can't envision it. 77 trying to hold up a bank and then just goes, Ugh. you're lucky I'm tired, man. Just sitting down. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, though. I mean, the cops, like, they're, he might as well just put the handcuffs on himself at that point. They're just giving, a, like, giving you a quota number away. After he was transferred to the FBI Miami field office for an interview, the man waived his right to remain silent. I'll bet he did. Dang kids. Dang bank teller. <laughs> he can definitely tell the dude's 77. He's going to let it go. Yeah. Told you back in my day, cops really had guns on him. You know. If you're ever arrested, shut the fuck up. Easiest thing to do, too. It's easier to do it. Just stay quiet. Shut up. Ask for your lawyer. Shut the fuck up. The end. Fucking. I love how they trick. They're just like, can you wait there for a minute? All right. It's a bank. You have to wait, sir. There's a line. <laughs> also, there's a line, sir. You see the red rope? No favors. <laughs> no one cuts, sir. No one cuts. Sorry. Also, I, I, I just love also means of intimidation from a 77 year old. That judge for that case is going to be like, oh, come on. Uh, uh, Mr. Ba Mr. Magoo is trying to get savage and it's not working. Well, next up, we have. What? I watch like crime dramas and shit all the fucking time and i look into all the the planning and the preparation there was like one that was just on netflix that that kaleidoscope one where they're like okay we're gonna rob have this little robbery so we can fund this bigger robbery and you're gonna you're gonna take this money and you're gonna go get the uh the uh the van and you're gonna make sure it's outfitted we're gonna just blah 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 blah, blah all the shit that is like you think oh that's what what crime is like and in reality it's a dude trying to to get drugs across the country in a fucking Uber. I think you have to pay extra for that for Uber Eats. I'm pretty sure there's a fee. Federal agents have arrested a man who's accused of trafficking tens of thousands of dollars of methamphetamine in New Hampshire. If, if he would have gotten in a wreck and there was like the slightest engine fire or something... Oh, the next 10 blocks would have been vaporized. Yes. Uh, Narcan Antonio Sanchez uh, Umbez, Umbez, I think I'm saying right, 23, appeared in federal court Tuesday afternoon, charged with possession with intent to distribute methamphetamine. Court documents. Uh, he allegedly delivered 25 pounds of crystal meth to an undercover agent, Rochester. That is so much. Oh, oh, investigators oh. say they confiscated the packages and weighed and field tested them at the scene. Uh, yeah. See, he, he uh, took an Uber from Massachusetts to traffic the drugs in exchange for $58,000. Officials say it's the largest seizure of meth in state history. Uh, yeah, probably yeah. by a long shot, too. Like, you'd think, like, you could, at the very least, you could rent a fucking car. No, no. Your dumbass called a fucking Uber. That poor Uber driver was trying to just make a little extra money while he's in school. That's it. And you're making him an accomplice. Man, that, uh, just, the, the one thing you have to remember about trying to use, like, taxis and Ubers for getaway and transport and shit, they aren't in on it. No, they, they're not. They have no incentive to help you with the law. Yeah. Do I? At all. And now their car is evidence, so they're gonna be even madder at you. So they definitely don't want that. Oh, uh, do you think they made do you think the guy made him put the Uber driver like put the briefcase in the trunk for him? Like put that in there for me. Oh, this little heavy. Don't jostle it. It's important. 
Uh, like twenty. I'm, I'm still I'm still blown away by the amount too. That like twenty five pounds. That is mass. so much. That is Walter White Breaking Bad levels of fat. It's bad. That's so much. Just like all those tubes of meth. All of it. <laughs> it's like the beaker sets. He's just all in gear into this guy's Camry and the trunk of it. Oh, how? That's so much meth. The whole, all, what state was this in? Uh, New Hampshire. Oh, that's, that's more than enough to cover all of New Hampshire's meth issues. Like, every, every meth head there, you get some meth out of that. Ugh, like meth socialism. Um, oh, we got one more this week. Ugh. When you're in a hole, stop digging. That's, that's an old adage. And, uh, when you've already popped out the airbags, oh, uh, stop fucking driving. Wow. Drink driver crashed twice, set off airbags, and kept driving. Drunk driver crashed twice and set off his airbag before continuing to drive on the wrong side of the road toward an ambulance. Gary Hillman was more than three times the limit. That is so much booze. How do you even do that? Like, how do you even function to get in the car at that point? Like your your liver's like, oh wow, I got an early day tomorrow. I gotta, oh, I gotta call it. I'll I I am sh- I am shutting down completely on you for twelve hours. You're on your own for insulin. He tell the police, uh, he had been drinking vodka, knocked unconscious during one of the crashes, which left him confused. I refuse to believe it was only vodka that could get you that drunk. Oh, uh, he entered the uh. He failed to stop, uh, collided with the security fence, uh, after going too fast around the corner, failed to stop and report the accident, turned on driving. He entered the A55, but as he approached the, uh, Puffin roundabout, he crashed into the central reservation, which resulted in his airbags being deployed. In his sensing remarks, recorder IWL Jones said, you should have left it at that, but what you did was sheer lunacy. The defendant turned around on the A55, in the direction of Bangor, sticking his head out the driver's side window in order to see over the air <laughs> Like a fucking Labrador retriever. This is like straight up the fuck. Like a dog. Remember Tommy Boy from the 90s when the hood popped up? And he was like, and he literally did that. Literally, and he didn't. And his first thought wasn't, "I'm scared to death. I need to stop." I, oh, I, I, and then was the, the wrong side of the road heading backwards. At one stage, Hillman drove drove head on directly towards an ambulance, which had its blue lights illuminated, uh, illuminated and sirens on. I would have. Like every bodily function would have shut down for me. Bladder, colon, just sponged. I'm throwing up out of fear. I've I've had that experience where like my car did a 180 on ice on the highway and I'm facing oncoming traffic. One of the scariest things that's ever happened to me when I was younger. But at the same time, I wasn't drunk and already hadn't been in an accident. Oh shit, man. We we used to have gravel roads around here. And when I, I drove it on one of those, yeah. oh, you go fucking sliding yeah. if you're not careful on a gravel road. Yeah, especially if it's wet. Oh, yeah. You might as well be on ice at that point. But I, but that drunk and then still, like, even the accident, the first one, the first accident didn't shock him enough to stop and get his bearings. I had to keep going. Where was he going? What did he have to get to? Like, for fuck's sake, you'd be like, I'm, I can't even imagine. And look, how old is this guy? 48? 48. I uh, cannot imagine being that drunk and not just being super tired. Yeah. Like, if I'm that drunk, I'm sleepy. I'm having a nap. I'm not driving in the first place. Yeah, if you're that tired, again, like I said, how do you even, like, get into the car by yourself at that point? Let alone get on a highway or any type of road. 
<laughs> some stuff I can't even put his head out the floor. Drunk, too. Massively drunk, sticking his head on the car while driving. And all you see is the massive airbag in the driver's seat. And he's hey, like, get on the wrong side of the road! <laughs> Jesus. I got it. I gotta get this back to the library before it closes! Ugh. Again, that is... Okay, I was talking about how that was so much meth in the last story. That is so much vodka. That is like... That is by the gallon at that point, if he's doubting that much. Ugh. We learned this week. We've learned if the airbags go off... Stop! Stop! That's God's yeah, I, way of saying you're done! I didn't think that was a lesson that near. I thought that would just be like natural instincts for life. <laughs> it's just when anything that big hits you in the face, you stop what you're doing. Like that, that, that that's your indication that that is the off button. You're done yeah. for the okay. day. Yeah. Even if you've never driven before, you would know, no nope, stopping, not doing this. We've, uh, we've learned that if you really must transport your bath, Get a car! Like, fuck's sake, that was how much level? How about $58,000? You could go get a beater for a grand or some shit. If you can make 25 pounds of meth, you can afford a good used car from Honest Bob's used car lot for a day. Easily. We have learned that, you know, if you're trying to rob the place, you don't have to wait. But it's good that you thought you did. That that helped everyone in general. You listen, sir. You know what? There is courtesy in the older generation sometimes. That's true. There is. I just love the fact that it's like, well, she said I had to wait. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, at least they know I'm in line. <laughs> um, We've learned that Someone will attempt to go into jail with a twenty-two bullet behind their testicles. I, I hope they interview him. I don't care what documentary it has to be for. They have to get out the reason why he did it. That's not a normal thing. That's not. There has to be a reason. We've learned that no matter how nice the destination, someone's always going to fuck up the trip. Yes. Oh, no fly list for life. No fly list for life. You don't get to do that anymore. And no, no, no. Finally, we learned. Um, apparently, we we are bad at teaching history because the kids yeah. seem to think they can fuck with with the old shit. And like, yeah. I I think probably I guess he thought, well, it's this old. Who's going to care? It's not like it's new. Ancient, like Roman Colosseum, Buddhist temples. You know, these things happen in threes. So what's next to finally have its name, like, or just something stupid written on something historically important for the well? Here's the fun one. They're about to build a tunnel under Stonehenge. Oh, those, oh, those massive rocks that all lean on each other and sometimes are like stacked like a T or an N. Oh yeah, that's going to work out well. Here's the uh, National Lampoon's European vacation. 